Kidney stones. Well, outside the president's office at John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York City is a gallery of work by some unexpected artists, suspected terrorists, with links to the September 11th attack. Men better known for their connections to Al Qaeda than their grip on a paintbrush. Well, Kenneth Craig reports on their art and the reaction to the artists. Most of the works don't directly express the pain of imprisonment. The serene images are a far cry from life in captivity at Guantanamo Bay. Many are seascapes painted by accused terrorists, men who haven't actually seen the ocean for years. Some people are angry that the art does what they think is uh, glorifying terrorism, and I try to explain to them that that's not my goal at all. Curator Aaron Thompson believes the art provides insights into the effects of long-term confinement at the military prison. Every artist is a current or former detainee working with scraps of material they gathered in their cells. It's made out of cardboard, of pieces of old t-shirts stiffened with glue. The rigging is from the netting inside of the prayer caps he's given. This one is painted on a mixture of gravel and glue. Whether you believe these men are guilty or innocent, these paintings are windows to their souls. So on September 11th, we had a pretty darn good glimpse of their souls, what their souls are about. Michael Burke's brother, New York Fire Captain William Burke, was killed in the North Tower that day. I don't think we need to see their watercolors to get an idea, a better idea of what their souls are about. Captain Burke's name is inscribed on a memorial just a few floors below the art of suspected Al-Qaeda operatives. The Defense Department considers the art government property, which it has the right to destroy. Burke thinks it simply needs to be balanced with images from the 9-11 attacks. Let's show the people trapped at the uh, 100 stories in the air with the flames and smoke behind them, people tumbling through the air. Burke calls the show an outrage, but Thompson says it's simply a form of communication from men who have no other contact with the outside world. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, New York.